Hiya, my name is Simon Smith, also known as Simon Archer. I'm an ex-ballet dancer, child performer, West End performer. A ballet dancer, it's quite a long journey. Um, it came down to a school teacher I had, really. Well, a dance teacher I had at a local agency. To start off, I started performing at about 11. I did a <coughs> concert at school and a local agent was in the audience um, who then approached me and asked me if I wanted to go to dance classes. So this was before I knew about ballet, it was just about movement really. Um, I'd seen things like the Hot Shoe Show and sometimes special on TV, this is in the 70s, or 80s, but growing up in the 70s. Um, they had a school, it was called Bowdoin Studios, and they had a dance teacher called Jane Somerville who um, had a history with Scottish ballet. And she saw me and um, thought I had some talent and thought I might progress in the ballet world, and she turned me on to that idea of being a ballet dancer. She also worked for the outreach program at the English National Ballet at the time, London Festival Ballet was beforehand, and they were planning on having a school um, for ballet dancers. Um, so she encouraged me to try and audition for it, but unfortunately, when I was leaving school, um, they weren't, the school wasn't able, the English National Ballet School wasn't able to open at that time, so I just took it upon myself to apply for another good arts college, which was Central School of Ballet. It was the only one I applied for and I got in and I continued, got a grant and I went to Central School of Ballet. Not to be a ballet dancer, just to be a dancer. I thought I would like to get the classical training and then go into musical theatre because I had a background in musical theatre. From the age of 11 I was working as a professional child actor, dancer, singer. I did commercials, I did Bugs and Malone in the West End. Um, films and things like that and so that's the, the journey I took to become a ballet dancer. After my first year at Central I fell in love with ballet and started to research it and found out that there might be a potential of a career. So before Central, um, Bowdoin Studios was in um, North London, Winchmore Hill and Palmer's Green. They used to do evening classes there and weekend classes. Um, but I also used to go to Pineapple Dance Studios in the evenings when I was at school and on Saturday, Sunday sometimes and do ballet classes and jazz classes there. So that's my primary dance background and then Central School of Ballet. Um, I think financially my parents could have just afforded it. Um, but it wasn't an option. I, was the, I think it was the last year of grants, because I was the last year of O-levels. I think it was the last year of the GLC grants. Yes. Um, so I was just really lucky. I just took it with both hands. Because that's when they used to, yeah, they used to um, acknowledge personally, purposefully um, give grants out to people of colour as well at that time. Um, at first, they didn't discourage me, but they didn't particularly encourage me. I remember I had a scholarship for Bowdoin's because my mother refused to pay for at the time. Or, but she paid for my other classes, so pineapple and things like that as I went on progressed. Um, they didn't know it. I think at that time it was all about trying to get a trade. Um, but my mum secretly loved dance um, and my dad secretly loved music. So I think my force of courage, I just continued along that, that road really. And my sister turned out to be a musician. So out of the two children, we went into the arts with no, uh, with no um, artist background. My father was an electrician, and my mum was a, a nurse, orthopedic nurse. At Central School of Ballet, we had a company called British Gas Ballet Central, which was a touring company. So that was always the aim to, at the end of your two years training, to start rehearsing, to put, put on performances and to tour the UK with the company, which is what I ended up doing. But actually, a year beforehand, I was lucky to work with the, the graduates before me, so I was picked out of, two of us were picked out actually, myself and another guy called Fergus Logan, white dancer, who was from the Royal Ballet, a very amazing dancer. Um, so I was very flattered to be chosen um, to work with the older kids, let's say, in that company. So we toured around, had great experience doing that, doing professional ballets. But as far as performances, we didn't do performances at that time um, as other schools did, it was assessments. And we weren't allowed to work, I remember, because I still had an agent at that time. I used to get book gigs, but they wouldn't let me work. But I snuck out and I did a video for Jimmy Somerville. I remember that, because <laughs> I still enjoyed performing. But yeah, we weren't allowed to work outside of the, of the, the school's um, interim. Um, what stood out? 
And remember the jazz class with Deirdre Laval? I love those, because she used to use gospel music, so it touched the soul. It wasn't just plinky-plonky music. It was proper music, and she choreographed in the Horton technique, so it was Alvin Ailey. She danced with Alvin Ailey. So we got that kind of influence, which I do remember her, and her character. She was such a larger-than-life character, being a black dancer, black teacher. Um, I just remember having a good time at college, really. I didn't really feel any way. As I'm sure there were moments of feeling insecure and moments of feeling down or tired and depressed or not chosen. That's just personal insecurity. But I don't really remember anything at college, anything really bad that, that perturbs to race or anything. Not that I'm aware of, that wasn't aware at that time, I think, looking at it now. Maybe I'm wrong. But then I was living life at the time and just enjoying myself. So you really didn't, I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in learning my stuff and having fun, really. For ballet company. So my first um, was London City Ballet. So I turned up for class. I'd written them a letter. I was invited to audition at London Studio Centre because that's where London City Ballet were residently rehearsing for the first couple of years in the big studios upstairs. So I turned up to class as you do. I remember actually going to the bar and standing on the bar and the principal dancer came over and stood in front of me and actually taking her space. And I didn't realise that you had to wait for the principal dancer to take their space. But she just politely, polite, politely asked me to move over, over to the other side of the bar. And I think that actually helped me because she liked my character. Because I'm sure she, because she was actually, had a black background as well. Her name was Marion Sinclair. Um, racially ambiguous, but yeah, she was, we might call it Octoroon now. But um, I know she liked me. Yeah, she had a, uh, a soft spot for me. So I did the class. We had, there was a black colour, cape coloured um, dancer called Jack Wingard who was in the company. He was an amazing dancer, great representation. Also Ben Love was, had just left the company, I think, at that time. I don't remember he, if he was in the class at the time. I think he might have been. I think it was, yeah, I think he was there. Um, and also the suddenly deceased Harold King, who was always a pioneer for black dancers. He was South African, came through apartheid, but also always championed the cause for dancers of colour. But, so it was just a normal class, went through, and then the interview process. And I remember hearing, I think about three days later, that I was accepted to start in the September. So I had auditioned in the, I think it was a July, or July, and I started September with the company. And I loved every minute of it for the first couple of years. In the company? No, we didn't audition, they selected roles. So that was never quite understood. That was my, my pet peeve, I think that you didn't get a chance to actually audition. You were chosen by the choreographer of the certain ballets or by the director or by the rehearsal director to maybe cover things and then you would, they would see the improvement that way. But we didn't have to audition for ballets at that time, no. I didn't have to audition until I left the company again. So I auditioned as a child, as a musical theatre performer, um, various situations like that. And then later when I left the company because it fell into liquidation, they closed the company down. Then they started the company back as a neoclassical company, but I'd left then, I'd had enough then, because the last, I, I was there for six years, I think the last two years seemed to repeat themselves, and I was getting a bit sick and tired of not progressing, actually. I think that's when the idea of race actually hit into me, yeah, around that time. And I noticed we had another dancer, Darren Panton, who was from the Royal Ballet, phenomenal black dancer, and if he wasn't getting the roles, there's no way I was going to get them, you know? So that's what I thought. So I was willing to go back into musical theatre because the talent was there, but the opportunities weren't, let's say. So ballet had gone, really, and I'd stopped. Still did classes to a certain extent, but after a couple of years of realising I'd get away without having to be as disciplined, that was the first thing that went, yeah, basically. I just lived on, on the past, I <laughs> think, yeah, past technique, really. Yeah, it's terrible now. You know, looking at it, get lazy. After being so disciplined and so focused, just let it all go, yeah. I found living, that's right, yeah. Gosh, musicals. So, Singing in the Rain, um, I took Bugs Malone as a Child, um, West Side Story, um, Evita, song and, covered Song and Dance in Europe, the lead of that. Um, <laughs> Miracles, which is an opera, which is... Sharon Ray, was it Sharon? I think it might have been Sharon Ray did Miracles. Can't remember the character for that. Um, that was, it was a psychological opera. 
So you evoking all the emotions, and you had two characters, you had a singer and a dancer, evoking, I was apathy, I remember, and there was a singer, um, Pepsi and Shirley, Pe it was Sh the black one, Pepsi, she was in it as well, she was like my voice, to apathy, so that was at the Albert Hall. Um, musical theatre, my last musical theatre job was La Cacha Fall in 2011, I did um, The King and I, um, various things. Toured France in the ballet company, a uh, couple of cruise ships, um, TV work. I was back in dance on Stars in Your Eyes um, over the years. So these are just jumble. I'm sure there's other things I've mixed out. I'm really sorry, but yeah. The first couple of years, because um, it's all fresh, touring the UK, touring abroad, um, working with people in the same industry with the same passion, regardless of colour or creed or sexuality or gender, was amazing. Um, so we did a mixture. For the first couple of years, we had, I think the company had more money. So we did one main ballet, or was it two main ballets? I think it was Cinderella and something like Romeo and Juliet, if I remember. But then we had mixed bills. So the mixed bills you used to get your teeth into, you used to do modern works or things that are a little more neoclassical, that weren't strictly classical. I used to love doing those. And it also gave the younger dancers in the company a chance to step up and do solos. I graduated to be a soloist, but through that sheer practice. What else? Just generally just working, really. Oh, there was a lovely ballad duet, Pierre Yezu, by Gary Trenton, I think his name. I think that's the wrong name, Gary something or other. That was another neoclassical piece, a part of that I did with a beautiful dance called Angela Murdoch, which I loved doing that. It was a divertisement, of a, a duet, two solos, another duet. That was lovely to do. Um, what else highlights? I just loved dancing, really. We used to do galas. Um, Princess Diana was our patron, so I got to meet her, which was also a highlight. I do remember... Um, running across the road, we, had, we were doing a, a, a gala at the Drury Lane Theatre and um, for Harold King it was some, a money fundraiser or something. I was running across the road going into the rehearsal quite early and I heard a voice. I turned around, it was Princess Diana with a security guard calling my name out on the street. So I ran up to her, looked around to see if anybody could see me, there was no one I could see to see the evidence. Um, I said, hello mum, how are you? She asked me if Harold was in. I said, I'm sure he is. She asked me to take her into the theatre, and I did. So we had met occasionally, she used to come into London City Ballet and drink coffee and um, like watch rehearsals. So she knew of her stances, because she had a long standing um, friendship with the company. I think she'd been with the company about 10 years because the company started in the 70s, so by the time I was dancing, she was well established as the patron. So that was a highlight as well. I've got to go to the um, Queen's Garden party through London City Ballet again. Did that, did various galas at the Royal Opera House. Um, I was one of the last dancers to dance on stage at the Royal Opera House before they changed it over with Darren Pant, another black dancer. We did Tweedledum and Tweedledee, Freddie Aston. Um, yeah, just interesting. Hmm. Sometimes you're touring, you're away from home, and you want to be at home. Um, I think the most upsetting parts were roles, I think, deep down, which I think I've, like, squashed, not getting the role that you dreamt of. But you didn't, there was no way of having any discourse in it. You couldn't challenge the decisions because they were made for you. I remember being upset within myself, knowing that I could do a role and I wasn't given the opportunity to do it. I think that, that, that was one of the low points. Also, when the company closed down, we were away in Scotland on tour. We had to break the, cut the tour short. So we were all left in a huge tour, turmoil. Remember that feeling, but that pr propelled me to leave the company at that time. Um, low points. Just generally being upset about things, I suppose, but generally, I don't think there were that many low points. There are more high points than low points that I can imagine, that I can remember. What I used to think isn't the same thing as I think now. Um, I suppose I was indoctrinated. Um, straight lines, good feet, um, sway back legs, not too much of a bit of pert bottom, not too much of a pitching chest, you know, the ideal. Now it doesn't matter. Your body, as long as you have the facility 
to be able to, cont to control your body and the facility in your body for looseness and for strength. I don't think there is one, but I would, yeah. Oh, definitely. As I was saying, just to see a majority of black people on stage is an amazing thing. Um, and of talent and of capability and of different body shapes, but I can still do it. So we all, the so young people need to have something to look up to, something to impress them, something to aim for. So definitely, uh, I think more, it doesn't have to be an all black company, but definitely more dancers, but it does help deep down. I never thought this, it's even like going to Jamaica for the first time as an adult, I felt at peace being in one place with the same people of color, which I never experienced that beforehand. So maybe there is something in it, traditional or culturally, for us, but definitely it's a, definitely it's a positive. My advice for young aspiring black British dancer, work hard. You have to work harder than everybody else. Don't give up. Don't let your fear take over and um, create negativity inside you. Be positive and believe in yourself because you're beautiful and you can do it. No matter, there's, there's a job for you out there somewhere. It might not be with the Royal Ballet, it could be with a smaller company. It might not be in Russia, it could be in Belgium. This, this, there's so much more out there, just don't be scared. And just attempt and push yourself.